Welcome, everybody. I want to tell you guys, if you haven't already heard about it, for the past uh, 11 or 12 years, a student, a public student loan forgiveness program was enacted, and nobody was coming around saying that they had uh, even been able to get on the program and get student loan forgiveness. But um, there are some people that have gotten it, and the New York Times has an article. I put the link below. And um, the program has uh, a lot of hoops you have to jump through. You uh, have to be paying uh, for 10 years in a row. You have to be in a qualifying nonprofit or public service um, place. And uh, you have to work at least 30 hours a week. It doesn't necessarily have to be consecutive. Uh, you have to have verification that you uh, worked at that. Oh, here's another article. They've run two articles on it. I'll put this other one down too. Hang on a second. So uh, this is the gentleman. He's a counselor. He used to be a musician. He had about 129000 Congress just set aside some money. And um, they're going to start uh, helping students with their, you know, the student loan crisis a little bit. But, you know, the program hasn't been around that long. And, um, you know, if, if you think about it, it was enacted in 2007. So you'd have to have people jumping on the bandwagon right away in 2007 for them to get paid. Um, I just put the link in here. You sh it should be showing up now. Uh, for them to get paid for this student loan forgiveness. And um, so here's the key. Find, uh, well, actually, I put a link below for this. Um, let me see if it's in my history. Um, let's see, show full histories. I'm going to get you the link here in front. Um, let's see. All right, there should be a, uh, I've got a link to the PDF to apply for it. Um, if it says alert, if you may still be eligible for loan forgiveness, if your public ser lo service loan forgiveness application is denied because of some or all of your payments were not made under a qualifying repayment plan for PSLF, learn more about temporary loan forgiveness opportunity. Okay. So let's find the, okay. So this is what you need to do. I put this link below. This is the form you need to fill out. Okay, so you have to apply for it. Now you have to consolidate your loans into a direct loan with a qualifying uh, direct loan income-based payment, um, income-based repayment uh, plan. So here's, you read all these points here. Let's make this bigger. And the link, the link to the article that I just showed you also, both of those articles are under there. So um, here's some key points. 120 qualifying payments. You have to do income-based repayment, uh, and you have to be working at least 30 hours a week. And they said it's just employed full-time by a qualifying employer or employers. Okay, so employers, you could have more than one in here. And you have to be, okay, I already said number two. Um, it says, to qual if I qualify forgiveness, only the remaining balance on my direct loans will be forgiven. In other words, the 10 years of payments that you make on the loans are not going to be forgiven. Just to clarify that, that money is is good money to get rid of the debt. It's a good faith effort to pay off the debt. 
but you're going to be working in a charity or you're going to be working for a non uh, a public service where your wages would probably be lower so you're not going to get rich it's just going to keep you from going um you know you you could take a risk and not and and get a higher salary and work in a for-profit business that doesn't do public service it's up to you you don't have to do this um but anyway so if sub by submitting this form um okay the department will notify me yada yada anyway you can look this over yourself now i also looked for some checklists to make it easier to you know understand now here's on 13 this is a list um, oh, by the way, if your employer is a partisan political organization or a labor union and you check yes, your employer will not qualify. Also, if your organization, your charity is a religious instruction worship service, proselytizing, you're not going to qualify. If but you might qualify if you're a religious organization running a daycare. But your work hours, any of your work hours that were spent teaching uh, religion don't count. So let's say 80% of the time you're just doing plain generic teaching. And 20% of the time you're teaching about some type of religion. You're going to have to cut your hours that qualify. So um, anyway, here's the form you would fill out. And your employer, you need to have your employer's name and their F I E I N. And you have to say your start date and your end date and your employment status. Now, I am not sure if you could have two employers part time count as a full time. I don't know. This is where a good attorney would be able to help with this. So um, they have a website where you can upload it once you've filled it out. It's right here. Let's go. You set up an account and you upload. Whoops, I lost my page. Let's go back there. Okay, so um, they have other, you need to read this whole thing front and back. And, and try to understand it. it. You know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. You're going to actually have to work for this help in charity or in public service to get your loans reduced and make a really good faith effort. And you need to you need to follow all the rules they have here. And they are giving them out. And it takes ten years to see results. But when you file this um, and you put it in there and you ask for review um, from the government, uh, it almost, uh, you know, there's no guarantee. Now, right now, it's, it's, it's in operation and they've, um, did I tell you? that you have to have them direct loans income based repayment yeah you might need to qu consolidate i should have a checklist in front of me um i did i found this website uh while i was researching this and a couple of other articles which i stuck below here but this uh nonprofit quarterly uh, shows a whole house um which if you work for a company, get their certification right away because they could wind up going, um, even if they've been in business a hundred years, like Jane Adams Hull House, which is right here, I'll show you. This uh, was in, in uh, business for a hundred years um, and she passed passed it down and the director a lot of their their uh, they had a lot of stock and uh, they went bankrupt i'm really sad they did um they helped uh, immigrants in the eight, late 1800s and um they helped 
uh, people that were in poor and um, somebody made a this is um, Jane Adams herself wrote this and University of Virginia um, has digital copies of her writings in here but um so when you when you go to your business get their information right away get it documented in case they wind up going bankrupt or something nonprofits do go bankrupt they get insolvent because <clears throat> if you go here I'll show you guide star I took nonprofit uh, governance class in my master's study and um I just took you know like one uh, class I, I had to now if you ever make donations somewhere you can look up a business um, it might not let's look up Trump Here we go Donald J Trump Foundation how much money did he get coming in two million nine hundred twenty nine how many assets does he have a little under a million Okay, here's another one. He's only got one dollar in assets and one dollar in receipts. You know what that is? That's what you call a placeholder. Lawyers will tell you to stick a dollar in as a placeholder, more or less. Sustain Trump athletics, nothing. Trump family trust, empty account. No money, totally bankrupt. Tops at Trump Inc. Th only thirteen thousand in receipts and twenty five thousand in assets. Trump of the Lord Minutes. I wonder if some people are using Trump Group Green Foundation. Are they using his name? The Willie and Celia Trump Synagogue. All these have zero to none money. Paula and Ida Trump Scholarship. Kansas. Friends of Eleanor Roosevelt State Park and Donald Trump site. Well, you're supposed to have a 990 on here. Well, let's look up the whole house. They should have one of their last... Um, uh, they had a hundred and thirty six thousand in receipts and a million in assets New York oh that's a different one okay Jane Adams Hall House Foundation this is the one that went bank, bank bankrupt um, isn't it or is this the um, well anyway usually you can get the 990s off of here download report oh I don't know anyway so when you when you have your public service loan forgiveness you got to work for a qualifying nonprofit you got to document it and you if, even if they go out of business it can still count if you can you can document and verify those those uh, work hours and that the business was qualifying so w I, what I would worry about is religious and political organizations and whatever else is listed on there as far as getting forgiveness um, so um, hopefully the program will be around and uh, they're basically public benefit that are not biased and impartial and um, you know whatever your profession is how about public forgiveness for lawyers or counselors that guy was a counselor maybe you know uh, a lawyers can can do something um, now just be careful I would I would like you know I would I like this guy um, that um, is advocating for student loan uh, reform. Um, did I put, did I discuss him at all? Um, this is not him, but I'm going to jump over to him in a minute. 
Okay, so I'm putting another link below. Um, just so you know. Okay, so student loan uh, forgiveness for lawyers. So let's say you pass the bar and everything. But, you know, it's really hard for a lawyer that's newly passed the bar to get a job. I know quite a few JDs that didn't even pass the bar that went to accredited ABA schools. They opened up businesses. Um, and, you know, I'm like, why didn't you take the bar? And they never told me. But now I kind of realize maybe they did take it and they didn't pass and they didn't want to take it again because it was so expensive. I don't know looming student loans, you know, whatever. So anyway, um, income-based repayment, this public service loan, this is just what, what I was talking about. And I'm not going to review it again. If you want to look at the article, I just put it below. I'm just going to kind of scroll through real quick and see if anything jumps out at me. Okay, loan school, law school loan forgiveness. I'm getting tired. A New York University law, for instance, at, ugh, I'm getting tired, I'm sorry. You can get all your federal student loans forgiven. First, you need to work in an eligible public interest position. You must remain in a public interest position for 10 years. You cannot make more than 80,000 a year. While those are fairly restrictive requirements, it is pretty spectacular you can become a lawyer without needing to worry about federal student loan repayment. These programs exist at more than a hundred law schools. They are mostly to encourage lawyers to enter public service roles. See a list of 102 schools by clicking here. Read about each school's student loan forgiveness program. No two programs are alike. Oh, okay, so if you attended the school, they actually have a loan forgiveness program. But, you know, I think you'd be better off doing the general one because I think they're working in conjunction with them. You know, a lot of these uh, schools, actually, let's go over to uh, Alan Collins's program because he has really studied the student loan racket. Um, it's it's big business and is it with two A's or one? Maybe it's, I think it's with one. Here it is. Okay. I put the link below. Um, he wrote this book. And um, he he um, he studied. He's on top of the law. He has a nonprofit, a five hundred one c three, where he goes around the country, and he does um, work toward getting the law changed. Um, but maybe he's going to be in the student loan forgiveness program. I don't know. I don't even know if his business would qualify. His business is um, here. And um, he's um, trying to make it. His, his main focus is right now, his concentration focus is allow uh, the student loan debt to be discharged in uh, bankruptcy, like a Chapter 7 or a 13. I, I'm not really sure. Um, you can always put your student loans in a bankruptcy. That's not the argument. It's just that the judges have to follow the rule of law, and the rule of law tells them they really cannot discharge that debt unless the person's dead or um, permanently disabled. Not temporarily like if you've got cancer you're going under chemo and you're not dead yet good luck with that um so the law uh he's working on uh see now that's the thing one of the things in there that disqualifies students is uh, from uh 
you can't be going to school, by the way, when you're doing this. Okay? You have to be already graduated. You can't start. You have to be in repayment. You have to wait until you graduate. And um, there might be others out there, but I'm talking about the federal. Um, um, and um, so there, there, there could be more than one. I'm fairly certain I had read that you can't work, can't have loans and deferment while on it. Well, anyway, this, this thing is, this guy over here has been working um, for, gosh, let's see, he's been working a really long time with these student loans, and um, where is that student, uh, um, oh, gosh, here, let me go back, where is he? I forgot where he is. That's funny. Why isn't he showing up? Am I stuck on this one page? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, it's been a long day. Ellen Collins. Okay. Actually, here he is. He's been on Newsmax. Lions of Liberty. Scared to debt. Um, student loan scam. He wrote a book. Should it be forgiven? And um, he's an activist. So this is the thing. I don't know if what he's doing is considered political. And um, uh, so that was his book I showed you. And this is the website. The link to the website is should be below. Um, about let's go to about so basically um he's working see i don't know if you can lobby congress i don't know if that can be he he talks about um he is credited as the inspiration for the student borrower bill of rights and has broken numerous news items in the press with its research findings Regarding conflicts of interest in the student loan system, student loan, student debt levels, default rates, corporate lobbying, and other areas. So um, he's a uh, student loan scam in 2009. He was selected as seven financial heroes by CNN Money Magazine in 2008. He was featured on 60 Minutes in 2020. New CNBC and obviously Fox. We saw that Fox and Newsmax thing and the Sons of Liberty. So it started, he started this group in 2005 and he's focused primarily on research, media and outreach and grassroots lobbying initiatives. So um, he's, he's got a couple of different things going on. He done a lot of work. He, he wrote a book and uh, he's a, uh, writing blog he's researching and writing and then he's also giving the information to um to politicians which will help them with their laws he's even been credited with the students uh the student loan what is it i just read it a minute ago the bill of rights the student borrower bill of rights okay well guys um you know, student loan debt is a huge problem in, in the United States. Um, it's considered the next big crisis. And one of the ways to mitigate that is the 10-year indentured servitude to pay off the loan and then get it forgiven. <laughs> I call it that. 80 grand a year is not that much if you live in a high-income area and you've got children. Forget about buying a house with the student loan debt with children and with um, a high income area like living in Manhattan, 80 grand a year is nothing.
some areas 80 grand of the year would be a lot like if you lived in uh, a rural area out in uh kansas 80 grand a year you'd be wealthy or west virginia but anyway so student loan crisis uh you know it's kind of like too late too, too too late for some people you know there's an ent entire generation of people in in their 20s and 30s i think they call them millennials that are saddled with student loan debt the likes their parents have never seen and then there's other people too that are older that have student loan debt too that decided to go back to school after they raised their kids or while they're raising their kids which is me i went back while i was raising my kids um I, I mean, I was in college when I got married, and then I dropped out. So, um, I started having kids right away. So, anyway, um, the student loan crisis, this is one way to sort of mitigate it, but, you know, it really affects the whole economy when people can't buy houses and start families. You know, right now in the United States... People are waiting longer to start families, and I guarantee it has a lot to do with the student loan crisis. Um, but there's a lot of articles on it, and you can get out from under it, and don't let it get you down. I know it's not easy. I got loans. They drive me crazy, and I'm looking at that income-based repayment loan consolidation 10-year not for profit work as part of my part of my uh, loan forgiveness and and I hope to qualify I'm uh, I'm doing free work right now pro bono but it won't count toward it because it doesn't count till after you're out and you're not in deferment when you're in deferment you can't do it and it has to be the direct loans income based repayment and I don't even know if it's going to be around when I graduate but believe me, these loans are really, you know, they, they, they can really get high. And uh, it's not just, it is not just the schools raising their tuition. Believe me, professors are not getting paid a lot of money. So um, I'm just kind of browsing while I talk. Um, but, you know, I really appreciate all my viewers because, um, it makes a, a huge difference um, to be able to have uh, s people point things out to me that I didn't think of and contribute to the conversation on ideas or information that concern all of us. It says, it, this is a nice article, and you know, it, it's just... Sally, if you look at that guy that I was telling you about, the studentloansjustice.org, I'm going to put this below so nobody has to pause it and go back to get it. Um, where is my window? I'm looking for the right window to find, to put the link in. I'm going to close this page. To, okay, here it is. I'm right on that link. So I... I can't see if anybody's in the chat box right now because I don't have that page open. And I get feedback and have to turn the volume down if I do that as well. So it's easier for me to not look in the chat box that much. I probably need more experience before I can really do that. So if you if you want, if you're chatting amongst yourselves, go right ahead. And by the way, I will close the box when I close this conversation out. I just put the link to this below. And you know what? I'm kind of running out of time. I don't know if you are. But this is something you might want to research and think about is doing um, public service work or charity work if you have loans. Also, if you are a parent and you co-signed a loan, you might want to look into that. Oh, there's one other thing. I think an attorney might be able to help you with that. I'm not really sure, but I had a link below here. Let me go back at my links. Um, 
Okay, let me look at the links. There's a lady that has a nonprofit, and um, she. Um, oh, I went to the. How come I have two? Oh, okay, there's a two New York Times article. I don't see it. What happened to the other link? That's weird. Wonder if I um, accidentally cut it out. Okay, well, um, I'll have to do another one on this if I want to expand on this. But there are um, lawyers that um, do nonprofit law work, and um, if you are a parent that co-signed a loan, that may the uh, parent might be be able to I'm not sure uh, for loan forgiveness well guys my uh, laptop is overheating so I guess I better call it quits what happened um, did this just cut out? I didn't even stop the broadcast and it cut out. That's weird. All right, well, guys, something happened. It's cutting out. Um, I love you lots. Thanks for watching. i got to get running.